Ashish Ranjan and Kamaini Swami were aid volunteers when they lived in Milwaukee in the early 2000s. Even before joining aid, both had experience working for social justice and have continued on that path, working as part of several organizations in Bihar for more than a decade. Ashish has a master's degree from Florida International University and a bachelor's from IIT Kharagpur. Kamaini Swami has a master's from the Tata Institute of Social Sciences. In collaboration with local organizations and with support from aid, they are implementing a three-pronged approach of delivering direct relief in Areria and Katiha districts, connecting migrant populations with organizations in other parts of the country, and third, they are lobbying the government to provide food for all. We are glad they are able to spare some time to share their insights with us. Thank you, Arvinda and Siddharth for being the technical moderator. Thanks everyone for joining in. Uh, we are sitting here in Araria and we are also facing lockdown. Uh, but I believe uh, lockdown in rural areas are far better than in urban cities where people are crammed up in small spaces. If you can recall, there was a fire in Delhi in 2019, December, and 42 migrant workers, mostly from Bihar, were killed. They were cramped up in a very small space there. So that is the reality of migrant workers that has uh, come to everyone's notice uh, during this pandemic. And the class conflict uh, has never been uh, seen like this so sharply uh, in our country, though we all know uh, that this country is totally divided uh, between rich and poor and different categories of rich and different categories of poor. But still, this pandemic at least has, uh, has brought uh, into light the situation of a huge number of uh, labor force, which is there uh, working in uh, very difficult circumstances all over. Uh, and if, if I talk about unorganized sector workers, because I represent one of the unions uh, and we organize mostly agriculture workers and workers who go to different cities in search of work. So, I mean, uh, what are unorganized sector workers? They are basically workers who do not have any social security, employment guarantee and work guarantee. So they can be thrown out of work any day. When they fall ill, they do not have any provision of medical leave, so on and so forth. They do not have any social security like pensions, like maternity benefit, provident funds, etc., etc. So basically they are on their own. And uh, as we speak, I think uh, uh, I have read a report from a TIS professor, there's a TIS center in Patna, there are about 15 lakh uh, Bihari migrant might be there in any parts of the country. Uh, and so what is life for them? I mean, life for them is mostly, they, they migrate for short period of times, most of them, uh, between one to six months, and they hope to earn uh, three, uh, 300 to 400 rupees per day uh, and then they come back. Uh, many of the agriculture workers who go to Punjab, Haryana and agriculture places, uh, they, they go for a shorter duration, one to two months and they come back, they go twice, a, twice or thrice a year during harvest and sowing season. Uh, so all of them are out of work now. And since you know they are daily wage seekers, and as we say in Hindi, Ki aaj kamayenge to aaj khayenge, uh, it's very appropriate for their condition. And uh, since one month, uh, one month they have out, they have been out of work without wages. Their family here uh, have been out of work and waiting for, for, for the money to trickle in their bank accounts, which has not happened. So you can imagine the situation uh, in different forms. And if we talk about hunger, uh, I mean, there have been some measures from the government and we have also written to the chief minister that uh, just by asking for uh, 20 lakh tons of uh, food grains, uh, the, all of the, this population can be fed and nobody will be, uh, one should not say hungry, but nobody will get, go without having any food. So just 20 lakh tons of food is required in Bihar to cover all rural households and all urban poor. And there are 800 lakh tons of food grains lying with uh, uh, lying in the go-downs, which, which, which is controlled by the central government. Uh, that has also not happened. There has been some relief package uh, in the sense the government has said that they will give uh, 
for three months they will double the uh, ration that means each person will get who, who 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 has the ration card will get 10 kgs of food grain and they had announced other things like dal and all which is not happening so it is 10 kgs of food grain for the next three months for the most uh, needy people uh, of india and as arvinda said uh, during our relief efforts we have been distributing dry ration we have also set up a call uh, basically our phone numbers uh, are there in the public domain and uh, that has been used by uh, several agencies and now people are calling us uh, in addition to our own workers who have who are outside they have been calling us and we can gauge uh, their problem and as as we were speaking uh, i heard uh, a whatsapp audio which was sent by a person whom we are trying to help from kamur in bihar and he has come from jharkhand there are 18 of them and he is pleading again and again in that voice message uh, that we do not have anything to eat please help us and that is the case with most of the people most of the migrant population because their money is over the first week we are not getting many calls we are in the wait and watch situation from the second week onwards the calls getting uh, the call, the number of calls started increasing and now we can hear the voice of desperation uh, from from the people uh, if you look at the reports uh, some some of the studies that have come up by our friends uh, anandita rajendra and many of uh, many of you would be knowing them uh, they they have interviewed about uh, more than 1000 migrant workers because they had set up a call center and they were helping people uh, now what they say is about 96% of those people who are stuck in different parts of the country did not receive any help from the government any dry ration from the government uh, and about 50% of those uh, did not have anything left the money was over they did not have anything to eat and they had skipped the meal also most of them so that is the reality people migrant workers are uh, facing here those those of uh, those people who are still in their villages uh, the village folks and others they are more secure they they, they have a network the, the the wheat is being harvested and the government is also giving some food food grain so they are more secure than the people huge number of people who are stranded outside in delhi and other places and friends from rajasthan and uh, mkss rajasthan and other other people tell me there are lakhs of workers in jaipur itself and they were they were uh, running community kitchen to feed them in delhi also similar situation today i see a video where there was line of 2 kilometers of people trying to uh, tr trying to get food cooked food there was a stampede in a government school because there was a rumor that the food would get over so all those situations are being thrown up and in this situation what we have what what the media is doing the media is playing the game of uh, uh, the, is playing the communal card and instead of our energies being focused on uh, on uh, getting together and solving this issue the food issue and other issues i have just touched upon the food situation imagine what would happen without cash because people need both food and cash not just food so the, the whole country was sidetracked uh, into a com communal frenzy and the whatsapp messages that you get the narrative in the media for a one week the headline in in, in our paper in, in a paper in araria uh, was talking about a particular event in delhi so the situation is really really bad it's very sad that this pandemic was used by a certain segment of population and especially the ruling class and their supporters to further divide the country and to further marginalize a, a, a huge population of our country uh, so having said that i would also like to add that if you look at the data also and if you look uh, if, if you consider that 93 percent of workforce is in unorganized sector and uh, and if you look at uh, the various reports you will find uh, that most of them about 75 percent of them have average uh, per capita expenditure uh, at about rupees 16 i'm talking about 2004 5 figure but it must not have changed uh, you can adjust with inflation so that that is the amount of uh, money people have in their hands and 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 that is gone that is gone they do not have any money left in their hands i do not know what will happen to the migrant population when the lockdown is over they do not have any money to come back and if they are traveling from kerala if they are traveling from delhi it takes two days to reach uh, araria so without without any food they will have to travel for, so their woes are not over uh, 
in, in this, these times, I find the response of the government lacking and the response of the civil society organization, individual people, a uh, large number of individual people have come up, they're serving people, but their capacity is limited. Only state can manage this, uh, this humongous problem. Uh, I, I, about one crore, I, I think according to my estimate, about one crore population, migrant worker population is all over the country. So this is a huge, huge challenge. Uh, and uh, the civil society organization is trying hard. Uh, individuals, uh, good Samaritans are trying very hard, but still it's up to the government to provide the large scale food that is uh, required in different mega cities. For example, Bilal, what Bilal is doing in Mumbai or in Delhi or in uh, Jammu or wherever. Uh, there have been some response. It's not that the government has not responded at all. There has been some response, but that is inadequate. Because the relief package with Modi government announced of 1.7 lakh crore, I'll just give you one example. In that relief package, uh, what is included is NRE 20 plus 20 rupees increase increase in NREGA wage, and there is no energy work going on. So what is what is the use of 20 rupees increase the increase in NREGA wage? That's ridiculous, and they have included that amount in that 1.7 lakh crore. If you carefully see that amount. It, it, it counts to nothing. 500 rupees uh, in Jandhan account, uh, will that be enough? 1000 rupees uh, to those who already have ration card, will that be enough? No, certainly no. There are other needs of people, medicine, medicine needs. I, I'll tell you that the OPD of hospitals were closed here. It started only today in Araria. Can you imagine lakhs of people not having any medical facilities and OPD of the hospitals were closed? So situation is really tough. And it will become tougher because all the migrant population, especially from Bihar, which relies on its migrant income, uh, they will have no job in months to come. So I think the large sec section of our population will fall below the poverty line. And uh, they will have tremendous issues uh, with their livelihoods, uh, with the food situation. And I don't see that government is uh, actually serious about it. Otherwise, they would have supplied just 20, to, uh, 20 lakh uh, tons of food grains to feed uh, each family in Bihar. That That is uh, too much for the central government to give. I'll stop here because I think I've taken more than 10 minutes. If I have not, I, I, uh, I'll let Kamaini also add. She has not spoken. Huh? We have a couple of minutes if, uh, if, if Kamaini would like to add. Yeah. So I, so we thought that Ashi should make the presentation when we do the question answers and I'll chip in on that. So we should sure. do that. Sure. You have any other more points to make? Then you go ahead. So I will have you, a, I mean, another minute if you want, Ashish, <laughs> or two. Yeah, I'll, I'll just tell you what the situation is like. Uh, Bihar is one of, it's not a hotspot uh, zone of the country. Uh, and we have had only about 90 cases so far, I think, if I'm not wrong, and two deaths. So it's, uh, but still the lockdown is complete and people have supported the lockdown. Uh, people have voluntarily uh, supported the call. Every time there was a call to do something, which was, I think in my personal opinion, quite, uh, quite ridiculous. And uh, it, it led to many rumors and all kinds of superstition, but that apart, uh, the, the situation here is that everything is closed. The, nobody, uh, is out on the street most of the day, but during the morning and the evening hours, shops are open and people go. But with the subsidies coming in the bank accounts, all social distancing norms have been flouted. Because even in a small branch where I have my account in Araria, there were uh, 10,000 people got subsidy in their account, 500 rupees. And old people were in the lines. Because as you know, um, Jandhan account, mostly women and pensioners account, uh, women more than 60 years old, they were in the line standing for hours and uh, in some cases they had to come multiple days to uh, get their money uh, and, and the situation is worse in, uh, uh, in the rural areas where the CSP model has been applied where each person has to give uh, their thumb impression and the same machine is catering to about 100-200 people per day. Uh, so, I mean, in terms of social distancing norms, in terms of all these things, uh, rural India is nowhere. Thank God that we do not have uh, major cases here. Uh, the number of cases are very small. If, if at all, uh, we see increase in cases, I think it's very difficult to contain 
uh, the pandemic here because of uh, because, because social distancing is very difficult to achieve in uh, rural India. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish and Kamaini. So.